Hello, welcome to Merrimack Valley Visions. I'm your host, Robin Ellington, with another show about your ideas, improvements, and innovations for the Valley. Here you'll meet people who have a vision to make the Valley a better place to live, work, and play. Maybe what you see here will challenge you to get involved to give back. I'm here today with Phyla Slade, Vice President of the North Andover Improvement Society. Welcome, Phyla, to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Well, I wanted to find out, first of all, a little bit more about you and <laughs> how long you've lived in town and how, what led you to the North Andover Improvement Society. Uh, we moved here in 1958. My husband had a job at Bell Laboratories. And so um, we just had come to town and uh, Ted Leland had Howell Oil Company at the time and he arrived on our doorstep and said that he would like to be our oil man. So we said fine, but it turns out that he also was president of the Historical Society or the Improvement Society or both or something, I don't know, and he, he wanted to get new blood in so he invited us to, to join. And we not knowing that these were supposed to be exclusive uh, meet uh, organizations that only the elite joined, we, sure, so we came, we've been active ever since. <laughs> well, that's wonderful because we need more volunteers like you, <laughs> especially dedicated volunteers. So if you moved in in 58 and started serving, then you're just four years shy of 50 years. 60? 60 years, is it? Oh, yeah, 60 least, years. Been, I know goodness. we've been here 56 years, something like that. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you very much on behalf of the town. That's terrific. So let's talk about how the North Andover Improvement Society came to be. Well, in, 19, in 1888, um, a group of um, leading citizens of the town decided that uh, something needed to be done to help with the trash and organization in town and to um, they had their um, purpose that they decided, they organized in, 1988, in 1888, and in 1893, they became incorporated as the North Andover Improvement Society, one of the oldest improvement societies in the state. And uh, so the uh, articles of incorporation say, it's the improvement of the physical aspect of the town of North Andover, and the preservation of its natural beauties and points of historical interest. So that was, that's the purpose, and over the years, they've done many different kinds of things to further that purpose. I wonder, in relationship to the rest of the country, how, how the North Andover Improvement Society um, is in terms of age. It would seem to be one of the forerunners, wouldn't it? Well, it was, it was a movement that was going on at that time, I think, um, to um, build parks and, and celebrate nature okay. and that sort of thing. Instead of very formal gardens, people were having more in, informal kinds of parks and that kind of thing. So The Emerald Necklace in Boston and that kind of thing. It was, yes. It's all part of that same idea. The same movement. Mm -hmm. So you've told us about what your vision is. Mm -hmm. That's to beautify the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see just what a remarkable job the society has done. And your mission, how many members do you have? Right now we've got about 75, I think. We'd be happy to welcome lots more. But um, that's really active members are about 10, you know, so the board members, because we just have, we don't have uh, monthly meetings as such currently. We, we do have an annual meeting, which we'll talk about later. Okay. Um, once a year, and we try to get a speaker that will interest people, and it's always an open meeting where people are welcome to come and uh, enjoy this, uh, whatever the speaker, and the speaker is always something pertinent to the natural beauty of the town or the history of the town. I have to ask, is this meeting going to be held outdoors? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I, outdoor meetings are always such a, a challenge, I think, because you never know what the weather's going to be. So <laughs> you always have to have a backup plan. I'm sure. <laughs> I think the last three days are a pretty good example of <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this, actually, it's going to be June 3rd at the library at 7 o'clock. It's a Monday night. Okay. And there'll be refreshments. Nice. So, <laughs> And I'm not exactly sure what the program's going to be yet. So the speaker's not lined up yet? Well, it's either going to be um, Glenn Aspisley and the uh, Trails Committee, Good. or it's going to be John Kimball, who has put together a very nice program about the Charles Ward Reservation, in, which is in Andover, North Andover. His family owned that property for 
generations, and he's very interested in it. So he's got a program on the history and the, and the natural history that he's been showing. Where is that exactly? Um, the easiest access is to go down 125 toward, uh, around 125, you come to first cross street you come to is Prospect Street. Yes. Take a left and the parking lot is there. There ah. is now an access from the new Bright View. Um, yes. And, yeah, there's the old Bradford, not yeah. Bradford Hill. But this, it's, it's, this, this is, is Boston area. Hill. And Boston it's, Hill. It's a very steep trail, but there is a trail coming because that's part of the property comes out there. Okay. Well, wow. <laughs> either program sounds great. We're, this show is a big fan of Glenn's. So. Yes, right. <laughs> right. So you say that sometimes you have you're, you do have meetings outside of the annual meeting. Where do you meet? Well, and uh, well it's generally board meetings, and we've been meeting in people's okay. houses generally. Okay. Now, There's are no those meetings po are they open to the we public? Have, well, they, in theory, but we never post them. So okay, and we don't have we haven't gotten our website going yet. So, so the best chance that someone would have of finding out more about the North Andover Improvement Society would be to go to the annual meeting. Yes. Okay. And also, um, of course, we ha I sometimes have this brochure, which is um, at the library, which explains some of the history of the Improvement Society and how you come become a member. Wonderful. Which simply means you pay a single membership of ten dollars and a family membership of fifteen dollars for the year and that you're a member. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Instant member. So they could call you yes. to mm -hmm. be become a member mm -hmm. and uh, your phone number is nine seven eight six eight three nine two eight two. Wonderful. So you're in charge of new members? <laughs> now. <laughs> now. <laughs> Okay. Um, I know you're planning a website too. Yes, we, we would really like to have a website. So you need a volunteer to help you with that perhaps? That uh, would not be a bad idea. So we're making a general call out to the public that anybody with a website development experience, mm -hmm. we have a, a, a wonderful nonprofit here who's looking for help. So that would be a grassroots type of development project. Definitely, definitely. Okay. And it wouldn't be a very complicated one, I wouldn't think, but nevertheless. Well, helpful. you would certainly to want to post uh, the, the membership information and the various projects you have going on in town. And we'd have links to uh, the, the Trails Committee and all to the wildlife uh, team. Wonderful. Okay. So you have a cleanup scheduled coming up we very do. soon? We do these twice a year. Um, what happened was that the park was designed in 1922 by uh, Olmsted Brothers, uh, landscape architects. They were the, the descendants of Frederick Law Olmsted, who was a very famous architect. He did the, uh, he was most famous for Central Park in New York. Wow. But th that was his first big job. But he did, had, done thing, had done after that things around the world. And um, so his sons took over after he died. And so that's the Olmsted Brothers. And they met at an office in Brookline. And, um, so Henry Vincent Hubbard, who was a partner there at the time, um, came out and did uh, the park, designed the park, and uh, this hound, there are 18 houses that are also part of that. It was a planned residential development, the, probably one of the very few in the Merrimack Valley. It was professionally planned. And so uh, we have all the documentation, all the papers. Olmsted Brothers saved everything, so we have all the correspondence. and. Um, including the original plan for the park, the planting plan. But over the years, although the town had copies of it, it is, you got so you couldn't see where the paths were anymore and most of the shrubbery had gone and so forth. And so the Improvement Society, Society decided around 1990 that we would like to really like to restore it. So we got uh, Peter Hornbeck, who had an office in the brick store, to come and help us to put in a plan that would have the same th idea. He understood the principles because he studied under Henry Vincent Hubbard um, of design, but because elm trees uh, you aren't going to plant anymore. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't plant one variety of maple tree, which is what they had done. There were other kinds of shrubs that were not available anymore, but so he did a new plan using some of the old plants and some new plants that would look like those plants. And so then we raised about $130,000 and restored the park. <laughs> New paths and all the whole bit. And people donated benches. And so now the park is as, but now 
after it's, you can't just leave a piece like that sitting there. It has to be kind of kept up and weeded and pruned and stuff. So twice a year we have a cleanup day in the spring and in the fall. And the idea is to uh, prune the shrubs and maybe plant new ones, uh, put down mulch, and uh, just kind of spruce the park up for the next season. So uh, on May 3rd, we are from on Saturday morning, we're having a, a spring cleanup day. And what time does that start? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. And generally, how long does it go? Well, until the mulch gets used up. <laughs> so theoretically, nine to twelve. Nine to twelve. Uh, lately, we've had a lot of help from the Boy Scouts and so forth, and oh, we could great. probably this year maybe order more mulch, so we'll take longer. But we've been getting over around eleven, so it's nine to twelve. So do people show up with their own loppers, their own rakes, and then they a couple report for duty, and yeah, they say, where do you want me? <laughs> exactly. That's just what they do. <laughs> just, just what they do. Those are great projects. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I understand, too, that you brought a, brought a photo album with you today. I did. And I did. so maybe we'll see some examples of mm -hmm. the work you've done in the park. Yes, yes. So let's uh, go through them now, and okay. you can tell. I, I also have some things of what the Improvement Society has done over the years. Oh, good. And they're part of the photo album? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. And we can uh, tell then, tell our viewers what we're looking at. OK. <laughs> this is my husband and me sitting on a park bench donated by the Improvement Society at the end of what's called Joyce's Trail, which runs from Edgewood down to the lake. And it's a, a wheelchair accessible trail. And so there we are, my husband having put the bench together. <laughs> this is volunteer one and volunteer two. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> OK. And this is a picture of um, the park uh, from the corner of Brad Street and Parkway, I think. You can see the path there going through in the shrubs and the trees. So this was this taken it? recently? Uh, yeah, so I took this Maybe last month. <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> and this, this is. Uh, looking across the park toward the library, which is part of the, um, the, the, the development. What is, it's become is Tavern Acres National Register Historic District Wow! because of the Olmsted brothers and the fact that the park is still complete. It, it didn't have a driveway put in the middle of it or a parking lot or something. And um, so there are the 18 houses. There's Brad Street Road. There are several houses on Main Street that are part of the National Park, the National Register Historic District. Wow. And that's one of the things we did is the pro in the process of restoring the park, um, the Mass Historical Commission said you should put it on the National Register, so we did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds simple, but it wasn't that simple. Anyway, there, there is the original, mm -hmm. the, it was, the park was established as the home for the World War I monument, which is what this is. I see. I've had business meetings on that bench. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to meet. Yeah, people, and many times you see people just sitting there eating their lunch or reading a book or something, yeah. And these, this is uh, in the spring. Um, either side of the monument, there are these azaleas. So what time of year uh, can we May. expect to see? This is May? Yeah. Okay. So would we see something like this as early as May 3rd? <laughs> I don't think so. However, the magnolias, which we'll see shortly, will, are coming out now. Oh, and the one batch of, bingo, right are. on cue. Yeah, there we go. There is the view <laughs> that the forsythia at the, on the right, and then the magnolias. Um, and the library in the background. And the library in the background. And you will see, uh, right now, there are also forsythia coming out on Green Street. These aren't out yet. but those I have are, forsythia in my yard, and yeah. they don't look like this. There's yet. different varieties. And so it's an earlier variety on Green Street, and this is a little later variety. And I'm sure that was a deliberate planting. It, it, the park is designed to have year-round color. So there's some there's berries in the fall, and then oh. through the winter, the blueberries have a little bit of color in the twigs. So there's always some kind of color. Always something going yeah, on. That's the general. That was the whole. That was part of the planting plan. So I see there's no age restriction for no volunteers. No age restriction. <laughs> no, no. We've had two-year-olds that kind of come around and pat things, and, and they really help. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a typical cleanup job, spreading mulch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK. And uh, this is one of the trails for the, the, uh, for the uh, actually, this is going up from the lake. Uh, is this Wire Hill? No, th this would be, um, you know, I'm really not sure exactly which one, but they all look, th this, I think, is uh, Joyce's Trail. 
which is behind Edgewood and running down to the uh, lake. Mm -hmm. And one of the projects years ago was to put a couple of benches, uh, simple benches, at Becky's Pond. Is that behind Ace Hardware? Yes, it is. <sighs> and right now I can see that we need to restore those benches again. But I wanted to use that as one of the things that over the years we've done many things around different parts of town. Is and, this and a park? Uh, it's town-owned property, yeah. Does it have a name? Well, the pond is called Becky's Pond. That's Becky's Pond. Mm -hmm. Becky's Pond Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My daughter Becky was charmed. Because <laughs> the other two girls wanted to know where were their parts. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That was wonderful. I felt like I just took a walk through North Andover. <laughs> so you have an annual meeting in June, mm -hmm. and the public is invited. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine this meeting is a, a good introduction to yes. the North will, Andover be Improvement a, Society. Be, it is. What, it, what kind of attendance are you expecting? Well, it all depends on how interested people actually are in the program, I think. Sometimes uh, we'll get about 20 and, or 15, and sometimes we'll get 30 or, or more, depending on how interested people really are. So I think this is pretty much an open invitation for people mm -hmm. to come. One of the things I n didn't mention that I always like people to know is that one of the big projects of the Improvement Society over the years was putting together the common. The common was not a park as it is until 1958. The Improvement Society started the project around 1900 to clear off, th there were three houses on the, on the park and a road that went through it. There were three houses on the common at mm -hmm. one time? Yeah. In fact, in 1958, we got here just in time to see the last one be moved off. Huh. And it's over on Appleton Street now. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and so, um, so then the Improvement Society, having put it all together, gave it to the town for the enjoyment of the, of the population. So what kind of work is being done on the common or projected? Uh, the DPW pretty much takes care of it now, but, okay. but we consult. Um, I was working with John uh, Lavin on what to put in when they did some quite a bit of planting last last year. The question is what what to plant, and we were, I was encouraging some more flowering plants because we had flowering trees along Andover Street. That area was landscaped very early on, but I thought it'd be nice to have some color on the rest of it. So we'll see how they go. <laughs> nice. So. Uh, what other projects do you have going on in town? Well, right now, we have uh, three committees. One is the Friends of Patriots Memorial Park. One is the uh, Friends of the North Andover Trails, that they are under our umbrella. And the other is the North Andover Wildlife Team, which is also under our umbrella. Hmm. So those are, but we're always looking for more projects. If anybody wants to come and uh, <laughs> join the society ideas, and <laughs> start a project would be very happy to hear about it. So how do you raise the funds for the mulch, for the new plants and such? Um, through the dues, which are very low, but some to the Improvement Society, and extra donations, people will give extra money, and the mulch has usually been donated the last number of years, either by Peter Breen or by the Barker Farm, and so that's, that's very helpful. helpful. Yes, that <laughs> yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. So for those projects then that people could bring, uh, they would also be bringing their extra set of hands and they'd mm -hmm. be helping you out on those projects. Yes. So uh, would you invite them to bring their ideas to the annual meeting? Is that the right forum for it? Um, it might be, although I don't know there'd be time to discuss it much. Um, it probably, I'm not just sure whether we'd, uh, at the annual meeting, they could find out when we're having board meetings and come, okay. how to contact the board. I think that's the best bet. So yeah. do you make any kind of an appearance on the common during sheep shearing or? We uh, haven't of, of late. Okay. Uh, uh, there's the sheep shearing festival, there's the national night out, mm -hmm. and then the 4th of July right. as well. Yeah. So We used to do something on the 4th of July, but we haven't for quite a while. It would be it's great to see of, you there. I yes, would visit right. that booth. Yeah. <laughs> um, any last, uh, 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 any last pieces of information on what people can do on May third? Uh, well, depending on how many, we'll certainly be spreading the mulch. Right. Um, we don't 
rake up all the leaves any, under the bushes anymore because they really, it's good to leave them there as mulch as well. But we do spread around the trees and, and uh, around the shrubs and so forth. And uh, there's uh, pruning that will need to be done. And um, we fight the bittersweet all the time. And so <laughs> we, can talk, and we can show people how to um, There are ways of using mulch and newspapers to expand uh, planting areas, and uh, we've done that as the trees have grown and the little narrow the grass areas between them get narrower and narrower. If you put down the newspaper and the mulch, you don't have to dig up all the sod and cart it away, and it just it, by next year it's beautiful soil for whatever. And so we have things that we can teach people about that, how to prune and how to uh, make their, their oh, there's gardens reason enough. and things. Yeah, right. <laughs> Get some tips for their <laughs> own yards. <laughs> what some of the weed, not really noxious weeds look like. Well, one, of the, one of the things that we rambles. always hope is that people will adopt areas of the park to care for because there's weeding that needs to be done during the summer, and for instance. and. Uh, uh -huh. The thing with the, with the park is that if it isn't a shrub, it's a weed because we don't plant any annuals or perennials. It's so there's no question no what question. needs to be pulled up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's good to know. Now, you've brought some uh, additional information with you here today, and uh, I, wanted to, I wanted you to have a chance to share that with our viewers. Okay, well, as this was um, the history of the Improvement Society, and I do have it, if someone wanted to email me at rpslade, uh, at Verizon.net, I will send them a copy of the history, okay. which goes on for three pages. <laughs> so, but um, because the Improvement Society, as it started in 1885, and the, by uh, 1900, they'd planted 1,300 trees in town. Um, they had uh, run a number of different kinds of campaigns. Over the years, the, um, the there was a big fly campaign at one point to get rid of flies, get rid of garbage. Because of the Improvement Society working with the town fathers, we had trash pickup in the early in the 20th century. By Is once that a, once, unusual? Once a, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, Andover was still doing, when we came to town in 1958, you still carried your trash out to the, the town to dump. But in North Andover, we'd had trash pickup for many years. Um, I think first once a, once a month, and then it got to be every two weeks and so forth. Uh -huh. And um, to try and keep the town looking beautiful, which was the whole point of the Improvement Society, was the, the, the improvement of the, the beautification of the town and uh, historical interest as well, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, the town um, had got a town, um, they put in zoning bylaws, they put in um, naming the street, making sure all the streets were named and requiring street signs, all this kind of thing to organize the town, lot lines and so forth, so that uh, making it easier to, to deal with the town. And this was Improvement Society working over the years. I uh, had no idea. Through World War I, they gave out seeds and organized little gardens for people. Uh, it's just many different projects. <laughs> so that's, that's underlined some of the things. Um, in the 1890s, they established a clubhouse with a reading room and gymnasium, quote, to keep the young men out of the streets in the evenings. Ah, just the young men. <laughs> <laughs> so where was that originally? Um, that was in the old center. OK. Huh. Yeah. Wh where the youth center is now. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, th yeah, that was the How community center. How <laughs> appropriate. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it is, right. <laughs> A site committee was established to find a safe location for public garage and dumping ground uh, and monthly trash pickup. Um, large land areas were developed as parks and play they worked with the Davis and Ferber Company to do the first playgrounds in town. Hmm. Um, lecture series for parents in coordinating with the school department. Um, they per they the school department requested, and they set up a committee of about 100 people to buy pictures to put around this in the schools to beautify the schools. Wow! <laughs> All kinds of things that they were doing at the time, not just planting plants by any means. So, how much of your time is spent indoors versus outdoors today? In For my personal time, <laughs> <laughs> I mean the the society. The society uh, mostly yeah. indoors. I is would it? Say. Yeah. Although, 
that's really not quite true because, uh, as I say, we're our committees are the, are the park committee, which works outside, right? And the trails committee, which mm -hmm. always uh, is all outside, right? <laughs> and and the, and, the, and the wildlife team also outside. So that's all outside stuff. Yeah. And so then, what portion? What, what are the, what are the projects going on in town that would be inside currently? Um, such as really artwork for the schools. <laughs> I, I never yeah. would have. No. <laughs> I would never would have guessed that that no. was. I know. Well, it's, it's, it's over the years. The different people had different interests. Different things came along, but it's mostly been outside lately. I would think. So it's the ideas of the membership that yes, make all right, of these exactly. little individual so, uh, projects what happen. What can we do? This, right? What needs to be done? Uh, we need to contribute money to have. Um, this first burying ground fixed. We need to have contribute money to the historical society to take trees down. Uh, you know, different kinds of things. That, so you're uh, really closely linked with others outside of friends of the trails and uh, the wildlife. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're you're active with everybody in town. <laughs> yes, we try to be. <laughs> mm. So you had two. Um, you had underlined uh, a mission statement here that. Oh, this is the mission statement for the park. Okay. Um, because it is a Patriots Memorial Park, not a Veterans Memorial Park, and this the uh, the deed of gift says the town is to be the park is to be dedicated as a site for the location of the World War Mar Memorial. This, of course, is well the World War One Memorial now, and as a Patriots Memorial Park in honor of the men and women of North Andover who, during the 275, this is speaking 1922. 75 years of existence have rendered the state or nation patriotic service of either civic or military nature. So it is not purely military. Is there not a Memorial Day or a Veterans Day? The Veterans service Day services are there. The Veterans there. Service yeah, is right. there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Memorial I, Day services have a parade and end up in Ridgewood uh, Cemetery. Yes, okay. But, but the Veterans Day services are always right in front of the World War one monument, and one of the things we did uh, was move the World War II monument, which was in front of Town Hall, and put it in the park. And there's, uh, so it's over, it's the World War I monument's here, and it's over to the right is the World War II monument, and then the uh, World War, the uh, Vietnam-Korean War uh, monument's over here. So we, they're, this is just to make it a little more up to date, you might say. And inclusive. <laughs> and inclusive, yes. Yes. Exactly. That sounds like a great plan. Mm -hmm. Well, May 3rd, that's mm -hmm. the big date. Yeah. Then again, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, so it will be cleaned up just in time for Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the fall we do it just in time for Veterans Day. Okay. Yes, so we do it in October. Okay. And uh, then, then there's June 2nd, which is our annual meeting at the library, 7 o'clock. And you can and walk through the park to get there. You can walk through the park to get there, unless it will be daylight then. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be beautiful. Yes, right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on to the show today, Phyla. I've enjoyed this tremendously, especially hearing about the history of my own town where I live. <laughs> so we have a vision today for the valley, a beautiful place to live, work, and play, thanks to the North Andover Improvement Society. And thank you, Phyla, for being a guest on the show. We look forward to May 3rd, I'm sure, all of us. And thank you, television audience, for joining me this week on Merrimack Valley Visions, a show about ideas, innovations, and improvements for the Valley. If you have a vision to make this a better place to live, work, and play, I'd like to talk to you. Call me about your ideas at 978-337-6826 or m email me at rdeink at verizon.net. Then come on the show and share your vision for the Valley. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Robin Ellington, and I'll see you next time on Merrimack Valley Visions.